Star Wars Monsters Explained, the Gorax. In the last good Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi, do you remember whenever the Ewoks somehow built a giant log trap that smashed the ATST? Well, the reason they had these traps might be darker than you think. They either already had these traps or were able to build them really quick because of another great threat on their planet, the Gorax. Now, the Gorax was this giant, up to 98 foot tall humanoid thing covered in dark fur that kind of looks like a gremlin. And they lived way up in the mountains of Endor, but would sometimes come down to attack Ewok villages and eat them. So that's why Ewoks built their villages way up in the trees and created large traps like catapults and other large weapons. Did you know the Sarlacc was 330 feet deep? It also has these roots to suck up nutrients. Also, because it's a giant flesh pit and will sometimes go a long time between meals, they will purposefully keep what's fallen into their giant mouths alive for eons to be digested over time. To keep its prey alive, it uses these tentacles to sting them and then paralyze them. And that's kind of how Boba Fett stayed alive. He had a suit that kind of protected him from the stingers. But what's really interesting about the Sarlacc pit is that it does this thing where it separates the sentient creatures from the non-sentient creatures and it will somehow keep people's minds thinking and processing even though their bodies have been dissolved into the sarlacc's flesh. And what's even crazier is that people's consciousnesses then slowly merge with the sarlacc monster and they kind of become a giant hive mind. So yeah, it's like a horrible torture chamber. Don't get eaten by Sarlacc monsters. Remember that scene in Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back when the Millennium Falcon was inside the mouth of a giant worm thing? That was a space slug or exogore. These things are really weird for a few reasons. For one, they're huge, being up to a half mile long and have entire ecosystems inside of them. But what's really crazy is how they move through space. Basically, it has telescopes for eyes that is constantly detecting the light from nearby stars. And if anything ever blocks that light, it will jump off of the asteroid it's eating and just start flying through space. And it could just float through space for a really long time until it reaches another asteroid belt. Once it's found a big enough asteroid, it burrows down really deep and then spreads out these root-like things and starts sucking up nutrients through them. But it also positions itself so it can like lunge out and eat other asteroids or ships or other creatures in space. Another weird thing is that it reproduces through fission, where it makes a clone of itself that is pretty much independent right away. And this continues the cycle jumping onto other asteroids and starting to eat them. I watched this other weird thing that said that in the Star Wars universe, there was these evil scientists that tried to weaponize them. And so they made them grow really large so that they wanted to eat a whole bunch of stuff and then strapped hyperdrive to their back so they could fly through space really fast and basically made an entire herd of these things that were so powerful that they could eat entire star systems in a matter of days. So that would have been terrible. I thought it was pretty crazy. Star Wars Monsters Explain the Wampa. Did you ever wonder how the Wampa hung Luke from the ceiling in The Empire Strikes Back? Well, wampas are carnivorous apex predators on the planet Hoth. They are huge, just under 10 feet tall, and had white fur that was incredible camouflage. They'd hunt walking on four legs, using their white fur to blend in really well to get close to their prey. Then they'd rush out and attack their prey, only wanting to stun it to keep it alive for fresh meat. They then take them back to their caves and use their hot breath and saliva to stick them to the ceiling to keep alive to eat later. Now, the wampas' main food source was tauntauns, but they would eat human if they got the chance. But what I really like about the Wampas is that they're based on the Yeti, which is a mythological creature about a monster ape thing that lives in the Himalayan mountains in Asia. Also, originally in The Empire Strikes Back, they were going to have the Wampas attack the rebel base on Hoth, but now it's just a deleted scene. Follow me. All right. <laughs> I also really like this old game on the Nintendo 64, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, where you could let the Wampas out and they'd go and attack the Stormtroopers. Star Wars Monsters Explain the Rancor. Most people remember the Rancor from the scene in Jabba's Palace where they tried to feed Luke to the giant monster underneath the trapdoor. Rancors are these mammal slash reptile carnivores that come from the planet Dathomir. They're roughly 16 and a half feet tall, have these long arms, and look extremely dangerous. Despite their appearance, in the wild these creatures are naturally very gentle and social. They could even be domesticated and create a great bond with their owners. This is likely why we see that one guy crying in Jabba's palace after Luke slays the Rancor. Now over time, these Rancors can be provoked into having a violent nature and are often seen as mindless across the galaxy because of their use as fighters. However, many did grow bonds with these creatures and ride them into battle on many different occasions. There's a couple subspecies of Rancor like the Jungle Rancor found on Felucia and Teth and the Rage Rancor, a rare subspecies known for being taller, meaner, and having cool 
cool horns. I also found this cool other subspecies called the Rancor Dragon. It's basically a Rancor Dragon. It's just a Rancor that's been mutated through Sith magic to have wings and it can fly. And it's slightly smaller than true Rancor. Anyways, I loved fighting them on the Force Unleashed. Star Wars Monsters Explain the Zillow Beast. So during the Clone Wars, this monster was accidentally discovered after the clones dropped an electro proton bomb that opened up a big hole. Finding this creature was very surprising because it was supposed to be extinct for a long time. This thing was very powerful. It looked like a giant snake reptile thing, was over 300 feet tall, had three arms and a huge spiked tail, and had heavily plated armor that was invulnerable to explosions, blaster fire, and even lightsabers. This gave the Zillow Beast quite a reputation. So much so that one Zillow Beast that lived in wild space was worshipped as a god, but later was killed by Kylo Ren. Anyways, the beast on Malastare was knocked out by shooting through the gaps in his armor and taken to Coruscant, where it then broke loose and rampaged through the city just like Godzilla. But after a big battle was killed by poisonous gas, it was then cloned because Palpatine wanted to use it as a weapon of war, and later on it escapes from the Tannis base in the Bad Batch. I remember fighting it in Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars and it was really hard. Did you know Star Wars has space demons? These horrifying things are probably the most terrible thing anybody could encounter while traveling through deep space in the Star Wars universe. Star Weirds are ancient creatures very strong with the Force that have powers like life draining, force grip, force sight, and even force lightning. They appear as these dead looking humanoids have claws that can rip through opponents, and whoever looks at them sees their own decaying face. They're also nearly invincible, not being able to be defeated through conventional ways like blasters, and they specifically hunt force users, especially Jedi, they hate them. But yeah, these things would traumatize sailors whose ships would break down in deep space, sailors would hear them screaming in the vacuum of space like a banshee, and little is known of what they really are, but it's theorized they're constructed purely out of dark side energy. We all remember that scene in Star Wars A New Hope where Luke was dragged down by a tentacle thing in the trash room. Well, that tentacle thing was a Dianoga. These creatures grow up to 30 feet long, are cephalopods with seven legs, and have a mouthful of sharp teeth. They also have one large large eye thing that they would pop out of the water to search for prey. Dianogas are native to the planet Vodran, where they scavenged and hunted the swamps, sewers, and junkyards looking mainly for smaller prey like fish or crabs. According to the lore, the reason why the Death Star had a Dianoga in the trash compactor was because it was purposely put there to eat any organic materials that fell in their trash. What's interesting is it said these creatures are sentient and sometimes even force sensitive. So was it going after Luke because it knew he was going to become a Jedi? Anyways, watch out for these things when you're in the trash room. Star Wars Explain the Blackwing Virus. This is basically a worse version of zombieism. This was a terrible virus that was created 4,000 years before the Empire by the Sith Lord Darth Dreer. The main ingredient that was used to create this virus was this force-sensitive and fully self-aware flower called the Murakami Black Orchid. And it was said that because this virus was created with a sentient flower, the virus surprisingly became self-aware and wanted to recreate itself. Darth Vader learned about its existence later on and ordered it to be weaponized and it became known as the Imperial Bioweapon Project I-71A because they wanted to use it to wipe out the rebels from the inside. However, like all good terrible viruses, there was an outbreak. On the Star Destroyer Vector, a modified version of the sickness was accidentally unleashed. Those who were infected would die and then turn into undead hive minds controlled by the virus. Their bodies would become extremely decomposed, they began to attack and try to infect any living thing they saw, and what's even worse is they had enough intellect to pilot ships and even use weapons like blasters. The virus was transmitted through bites, but they could be killed by destroying their brains or severing their heads. Would you actually like to see this virus in a movie? Let me know in the comments. Did you know the Kray Dragon from Star Wars has 16 legs? So Kray Dragons are this large reptile predator from the planet Tatooine, and there's many subspecies of them, but the main ones are the small Canyon Crate and the larger Greater Crate that we see battled in the Mandalorian Season 2. The Kray Dragon first appeared in Star Wars A New Hope when C-3PO walks past a skeleton in the desert of Tatooine, and later on Obi-Wan actually does a Kray Dragon scream to scare away the Tusken Raiders. Anyways, Kray dragons are huge, they're 328 feet long and can live to 100 years, and sand people would actually hunt them as a rite of passage to prove themselves as warriors. In the Mandalorian, they have this huge battle with the Kray dragon and it seems to swim through the sand, and the entire time we never see anything except its head. But this is actually a picture of the entire creature's design, it has 16 legs, I love it, it's wonderful. Anyways, these things ate rocks to help with digestion just like birds do, and if they ate a kyber crystal, it would turn into this special dragon and Pearl, which was extremely rare and valuable across the galaxy. Jedis would use them in their lightsabers to create this extremely powerful blade that made this strange howling sound, and the design for the Kray Dragon was actually modeled after a sauropod, so that's pretty cool. Also, fun fact, after they filmed that scene in the Tunisian desert, George Lucas's crew just left all the bones there because
because they didn't have the budget to take them back and they were actually there for a really long time. I think they only recently got removed. Star Wars Monsters Explained the Summa Verminoth. These are giant tentacle monsters that lived in outer space. They had multiple eyes, electrified tentacles that it used to trap prey, and were absolutely huge at over 24,000 feet. That's over four and a half miles. They lived around the planet Kessel, which is where the Millennium Falcon is famous for doing the shortcut through, where normally they go around this giant whirlpool thing full of debris, but instead they cut right through it. Anyways, when Han Solo did the Kessel Run shortcut in the famous 12 parsecs, they actually ran into and woke up the Summa Verminoth, which they then lured into getting stuck into the Maw and were able to escape. Which, fun fact, the Maw is the largest and worst black hole in the Maulstrom Vortex thing, and it's also the place where Abeloth is trapped, which I'll talk about in another video. In another story, Darth Vader was rebelling against the Emperor at one point, which leads him to fighting a Summa Verminoth. This Summa Verminoth creature had the power to torture opponents using force visions, which I guess Darth Vader was kind of used to, and despite all this, he used the force to subdue it to his will, and then he rode on top of it to a temple on Exegol to fight the Emperor, which when he saw Vader defying him, he used the force to make the Summa Verminoth crush itself. Did you know Star Wars had horrors beyond human comprehension? So Abeloth is arguably the strongest character in Star Wars. She appears as a woman with a smile that goes from ear to ear that's full of fangs, has tentacles for arms, and the closest thing I could compare her to is the devil. She actually started off as a normal woman, but ended up serving the Celestials, you know, the Force entities, the father, the son, the daughter, and turned into the Celestial Mother. But the reason she turned into this evil thing is because she was getting older while her family was staying younger, and to gain her immortality, she went to this really hard to get to realm, the realm beyond shadows, and bathed in the mystical pool of knowledge and drank from the font of power, and it corrupted her and turned her into Abeloth. Now, when the other Celestials saw what she had became, they built these extremely powerful technological artifacts and trapped her in the Maw, where she sometimes escapes whenever the current of force is altered and the flow of time changes. But like I said, she's extremely powerful. She has normal force powers like force push, force lightning, but she could also do some weird things like drain people of force energy, which killed them, or look like anything she wanted to, or take over people's minds and plague them with visions. There was this one situation where an entire generation of Jedi were living a little bit too close to the Maw, and she kind of made them borderline schizophrenic. She basically made them think that everyone in their life wasn't real, and there was another time she was being so bad that both the Jedi and the Sith teamed up to defeat her. So yeah, Abeloth, bad. She is the embodiment of chaos in Star Wars. Star Wars monsters explain the Mythosaur. You know that symbol that Boba Fett wears on his armor? Well, that was a Mythosaur. They were these enormous dragon-like creatures that some accounts said were as large as a small city. Mythosaurs had this scaly lizard-like skin, these two tusks that curved inwards to fight competitors, and were native to the planet Mandalore. This is where they made their layers in the giant Beskar mines beneath the ground where the ceremonial living waters were. The legendary Mandalore the Great was the first to fight and defeat a Mythosaur and then ride it. And then after, the ancient Mandalorians fought, tamed, and rode them into battle. It was also said that Mandalore the First was the first person to wear a Mandalorian mask, and that he carved that helmet out of the Mythosaur's sternum, chest bone, and it was extremely impenetrable. Although the Mythosaurs became like a mascot for the Mandalorians, even being the symbol they wore on their armor, eventually they were driven to extinction, very likely because the Mandalorians would hunt them as a rite of passage for young warriors. But in the Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 2, we see what looks like a still living mythosaur lurking beneath the ceremonial waters. So hopefully we'll see more of these awesome creatures. I think they have such a cool design. Thanks for watching and follow for more. Hey guys, real quick I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching all my Star Wars content and my other videos. If you've watched all of this and you're probably just like me for real and you're a nerd and I appreciate that, but your support watching these videos goes a lot further than you know. Doing this series just talking about Star Wars monsters has completely brought back my love for Star Wars. So thank you guys for that. Um, there actually turned out to be a lot more cool monster designs than I actually had previously thought in Star Wars. And anyways, it was just a cool series to do all around. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and there will be much more to come.